Hello, welcome to Hawk Math. Today we're going to be solving the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x cubed over x dx. Now my first thought when I see this is maybe we can try expanding out the sine of x cubed using Taylor series, but if you try that it actually doesn't work. So another thing we can use to try to solve this is Feynman's technique. And the reason we might want to use this is because it's very similar to another integral, sine of x over x dx, and that's very well known in a common problem that, is, that Feynman's technique is used to solve. So how do we do this? Well, it actually takes a little bit of creativity. Instead of doing this problem directly, what we do is we set i of a equal to integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a x cubed sine of x cubed over x dx. Now, where did I get this from? Because this looks like I just made it up out of nowhere. Well, let's look at some similarities. So we have an a up here, and this x cubed is the same as this x cubed inside the sign. And so the reason why I did this is that when we take the derivative, um, take the derivative of i of a with respect to a, then what happens inside here? Well, taking the derivative of the inside here, this part's just a constant. Taking the derivative of this will just leave you, by chain rule, with a negative 3x squared in front. And then one of those x squareds will cancel with the x, leaving an x squared in front. And then that can be a u sub to get rid of this x cubed and this x cubed and the x squared in front. And then we can actually solve the integral in terms of a. So now let's proceed to take the derivative. So i prime of a is going to equal, we still have the integral from 0 to infinity. Now, taking the derivative of this, this exponent will still stay. So we have e to the negative a x cubed. And now with respect to a, we'll have a negative x cubed. And then everything else will stay the same. So we'll still have a sine of x cubed over x dx. Now, as we see, this x will cancel with this. So actually, I'm going to try to simplify this one more time. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative a x cubed. Now this x will cancel with one of these. I'll bring the negative sign to the front. So we'll have an x squared sine of x cubed dx. Now this integral is actually not that bad to solve because we can do a u sub, u equals x cubed. That will make this inside go away, this exponent become simple, and this will go away in the du. So let's do that. So u equals x cubed, which will make du equal to 3x squared dx. So x squared dx is equal to du over 3. Okay, so now let's plug everything in that we know. So we have this equals the integral from 0 to infinity of so the negative x squared dx will become the 1 third du. So I'll write the 1 third right here, and I'll wait to write the du. And then we have this e to the negative a u sine of u, and we have the du. And now this integral is actually very doable through integration by parts. So I'll clear up the board a little bit, and then let's go ahead with that. Now, proceeding with integration of parts, I'm going to integrate negative e to the negative a u and differentiate sine of u. And I'll move this one-third to the outside right now so we can deal with it later. Okay, so now, uh, integrating, we get e, 1 over a, e to the negative a u. Integrating again, we'll get a negative 1 over a squared, e to the negative a u. And now, differentiating sine, we get cosine. And then differentiating, we get negative sine. And then we can stop there because I realized that once we expand this out, we'll actually get a form that combines nicely with this i prime of a. So, rewriting out our expression, we have that i prime of a equals, and distributing this one third to each term, we have a one third sine of u going diagonally, and then a one over a e to the negative a u. Now we'll have a plus one-third cosine u times negative one over a squared and then e to the negative a u. I'll just draw a little separator right here. Okay, and now we have the last part plus one-third the integral from zero to infinity of sine of u times 1 over a squared e to the negative a u. du. Okay, so why did this help us? Well, we note that this form right here, I can bring this 1 over a squared to the outside. So let me do that first, a squared, and then get rid of it in here. So now on the inside, we actually have something that's very similar to this. Let me erase this part right here. And we can further simplify this. So we take that this right here, I'm going to change this into a minus 
and then put neg bring in the negative one inside here. I'm gonna write it here because I have space. Okay, now this, we have the same exact form as in here. And so if I were to bring this one third to the inside, leaving us a one over a squared in front, then we have it, this whole part right here is just i prime of a. So therefore, this whole thing, I can get rid of and replace it with i prime of a. Okay, now we can add i prime of a to both sides of the equation. And that will give us that one i prime of a minus one over a squared, sorry, plus one over a squared i prime of a, will give us a one plus one over a squared times i prime of a equals all of this stuff evaluated from zero to infinity. I forgot to write that before, so I'll do it now. From zero to infinity, and then from zero to infinity. Okay, so evaluating this from zero to infinity, we plug in infinity into this term, up here, and plug in the u, remember. This will go to zero, so the whole term will go to zero. We plug in zero to this part right here, this will also go to zero, so this whole term goes away. Okay, now looking at this term, we plug in infinity, again, it's gonna go to zero because of the e to the negative au. When we plug in zero, this is gonna go away, and we're gonna, cosine of zero is gonna be one, and we're gonna be left with a negative one over three a squared, equals negative one over three a squared. Look at that, we have a, fo a formula now for i prime of a. All we need to do is divide by this one over, plus one over a squared. So i prime of a equals negative one over three a squared over one plus one over a squared. Now I'm gonna multiply by the numerator and denominator both by three a squared to simplify this. So we get i prime of a, is equal to negative one over three a squared plus three. And now if we want, we could factor out a one third from this and this would be negative one third a squared plus one. So now all we can do is we can integrate this to get back the formula for i of a. So let me clear up the board a little bit again and let's go ahead with that. Okay, so we have i prime of a equals negative one third one over a squared plus one, which means that i of a integrating this is gonna equal to negative one third arctangent of a. But we also need to use a plus c because there could be a constant in here that we actually don't know about. Now why could there be this plus c? Well, our original goal is to find i of zero. And the reason why is because if we were plugging in zero, then we'd have e to the zeroth power, which is one, and leaving us with i of zero is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of sine of x cubed over x, which is the original problem. So trying to find i of zero, if we were plugging zero into this equation, we could find our candidate zero, but then we have this unknown plus c. So we need to solve for this unknown plus c. And how can we do that? Well, if you're clever enough, you realize that as a goes to infinity, the limit of i of a, as a goes to infinity, is gonna be zero. Because this term is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller, so the limit as i of a goes to infinity of this integral is zero. Which means that the limit of this as a goes to infinity is also zero. So what we can do is we can say the limit as a goes to infinity of negative one third arctangent of a plus c has to equal zero. So now as a goes to infinity, arctangent will go to pi over two. So you have negative pi over six plus c equals zero. So c must equal pi over six. Now we can plug that back in to right here. And now all we need to do is find i of zero. So finally, plugging in i of zero, we get that it's equal to negative one third arctangent of zero plus pi over six. And our tangent of zero is zero, so this just equals pi over six, and we're done with the problem. So this is called Feynman's technique, and the way to use it is to set the original problem equal to i of a, or i of some function, and then differentiate. And when you do this, you wanna usually change this to equal something that when you take the derivative with respect to that new variable, it's gonna cancel out and make this integral easier to solve. So thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more like it and feel free to leave any comments or suggestions down below.